The Man with the Yin Yang Eyes, Episode 11. After helping Mr. Anderson banishes the feudal ghost, Mr. Simmons said that maybe he would accept me as his disciple and teach me how to become a master. I don't know if he changed his mind later, but I'm pleased. In the few days I stayed in Lakeville town, I kept following Mr. Anderson. Hello Mr. Simmons, you and I have to get up too early. Hi Miss Johnson, you're out early too. The atmosphere in the city and the countryside is completely different. Sometimes in the city, people ignore each other and live, on the contrary, in the countryside, everyone knows and is friendly with each other. Every time they meet, they greet each other enthusiastically. I've been here for a few days, but I feel the warmth of the people, far from the bustling city. Hi. After everyone greeted Mr. Simmons, they also turned to greet me enthusiastically. Most people here know Mr. Simmons was an exorcist, so when he saw me with him, most people thought I was a disciple of Mr. Simmons. Hello Miss Johnson. Don't be shy. There is nothing to hesitate, just say hello. People are very friendly here. You should get used to that. Mr. Simmons saw that I was confused when communicating with people, laughed and joked with me a few sentences. Usually, I'm not used to having intimate conversations with anyone, so it's indeed a bit difficult to open my mouth. The people in this town are really kind, and they live enthusiastically with each other, so even though I have some difficulty communicating, I don't feel uncomfortable. More than that, I also felt a warmth that I couldn't feel in the city, where people only focus on modern technological devices. If you want to follow me, you might have to quit your current job, won't you? Oh, I will consider it a bit, but actually, I am still inclined to follow Mr. Simmons as better. Mr. Simmons, please wait. Today we go for a walk. While we were chatting, we passed a house. Suddenly, a girl opened the door and called Mr. Simmons again. Can you come to my house for a moment? I have something to ask. When he heard the call, Mr. Simmons stopped, and I followed. The girl quickly ran over to where we were standing. For the past two years, our family has not been able to have a peaceful day. I would like to ask you to take a look. The girl explained why she called Mr. Simmons again and wanted to invite Mr. Simmons to her house. Mr. Simmons didn't seem to pay much attention to the girl's words, but he glanced more toward her house. I can't be of any help in your case, girl. As soon as Mr. Simmons finished saying that, he then clasped his hands behind his back and left. This time the behavior of Mr. Simmons makes me feel weird. Even if he wanted to refuse to help someone, he shouldn't be so harsh. He's normally very calm and gentle. Even though I thought so, I just had to follow Mr. Simmons. After walking a few steps, I turned to look, and I saw that girl's tears were flowing, looking helpless and very pitiful. I have to talk to my friend for a while. You can go for a walk somewhere or rest. I'll be back later. When we went to the house of Mr. Simmons suddenly said he wanted to be alone for a moment. So I leave my space to him. I plan to go for a walk. On the way, I came across a convenience store, so I went inside. I decided to go in and see if there was anything to buy to ease my boredom. I took a stick of gum and paid the clerk, then walked out of the store. I peeled off a piece of gum and chewed it in my mouth as I walked. While walking on the street, I suddenly passed a person, the corner of my eye accidentally caught a glimpse of that person, looking familiar. It seems that the girl who called Mr. Simmons and asked for help. Mr. Please stop for a moment. Everybody in town says that you are a disciple of Mr. Simmons. Would you mind coming over to my house to take a look at it for a moment? The girl also recognized me and stopped me. She asked me for help in a heartfelt and almost pleading voice. She looks really pitiful. But first, you have to tell me a little bit about the situation in your house, so I can see if I can help. 
Anyway, I have some experience and good eyes, if possible I will help her a bit. Besides, the strange attitude of Mr. Simmons made me a little uncomfortable today. I don't want to let that go by someone who is in dire need of help. My name is Amelia Jones. I have an older sister and two brothers. When she heard me say that, she began to report the situation of the family to me. Okay, take me to your house so I can take a look. What she said, plus looking at her made my heart melt. If I can help her, I will. If I cannot, then I will try to beg Mr. Simmons. I don't think Mr. Simmons does have an iron heart. Mr. Gregory, please come in. This is my home. The girl named Amelia heard me say that and was very happy. She rushed me to her house and invited me inside. That house is the house that Mr. Simmons and I were passing before. Following the girl's lead, I followed her footsteps and entered the house. I raised my hand to take off my glasses as soon as I stepped inside the courtyard. I wanted to see if there was something unclean around. But I looked at every nook and cranny in the courtyard and didn't see anything. Take me to the courtyard in the back. I noticed that this house seems to have a courtyard in the back, so I asked the girl to lead me to the back to have a look. Amelia agreed to my request and quickly went ahead to lead the way. We walked from the side of the house to the back of the house. Along the way, I scanned everywhere and observed very carefully. Dad. This guy's name is Gregory. He is the disciple that Mr. Simmons brought along. I invited him to see the situation at our house. When we went to the backyard, a man was standing at the pile of firewood, arranging and chopping wood. When Amelia spoke, I found out that it turned out to be her father. What are you doing? It's all nonsense. Give you a decent college education so you can believe all those superstitions all day? As soon as he heard his daughter say that I am a disciple of Mr. Simmons and was invited to see the house, it seemed that her father was very angry. He rebuked Amelia, who was well educated and believed in the supernatural. Dad, don't say that. There have been a lot of strange things happening at our house in the last two years, none of which can be explained with common sense. Amelia heard her father scolding her, so she argued, the atmosphere was quite tense. I want to speak up to reconcile but don't know what to say to ease the atmosphere. Be careful. I was nervous and hesitant to open my mouth, then suddenly, something rustled on the roof and fell across my eyes. It was a piece of brick. The brick wanted to aim at Amelia's father's head. I cried out and rushed to push him away. The tile fell to the ground and shattered. If it really hit Amelia's dad on the head, it wouldn't be good. This unexpected incident also made Amelia and her father extremely scared. They looked quite stunned and didn't seem to understand what happened just now. I looked up at the roof, where the brick had fallen, and when I looked up, I saw the ghost of an old woman standing above the wall. The ghost of the old woman looked down at where the father and daughter were standing with a face full of anger. You see, come again. To be safe, we should go inside first, dad. Amelia complained because her father always refused to believe what she said, and once again, her family's strange story unfolded in front of everyone's eyes. I glanced at the roof again. As soon as I turned around one more time, I could no longer see the ghost of the old woman. I don't know where she disappeared. Sorry for letting you hear what my dad said. That's my father, don't mind. When we entered the house, Amelia apologized to me and offered me water to drink. My name is Lucius Gregory. You can just call me Gregory. Now, can you tell me a little bit more about the strange things that have happened in my family over the past two years? I want to hear it more closely. I asked her to keep calling my name because it was easy. Then I asked Amelia in more detail about the weird things that had happened in her family. When I asked about this topic, I found Amelia quite sad. She pondered for a long time. 
Her father was smoking, and I noticed his expression was also pensive. Maybe it's not that he doesn't believe in supernatural things. I guess it's because he doesn't want his daughter to think too much. Amelia pondered for a moment, then also began to tell me what had happened to her loved ones. Once, one of her oldest brothers was walking on a mountain road when suddenly slipped from above and broke his leg. One is the other sister of her. While she is on the road, a brick fell from the roof down, and she was hit and injured. Another time, her second brother was walking normally when he suddenly fell onto the street and was run over by a car, crushing his toe. It was just a random accident, girl, you overthink. How can it be a random accident, dad? It's just as strange that a little brick fell on your head just now, can't you see? As for me dreaming of an old woman. Amelia's father always insists that his daughter is too superstitious and overthinking, he always tells his daughter it's just their family's bad luck, but Amelia disagrees with her dad. What does it mean to dream of an old woman? Can you tell me? While rebutting her father, Amelia mentioned that she often dreamed of an old woman. This caught my attention, because I had also seen an old woman who wanted to throw bricks at them, so I quickly asked. As soon as I asked that question, Amelia immediately told me that she often dreamed of an old woman standing by her bed, just standing silently and watching her sleep, not saying or doing anything. And every time she wakes up, she can't remember the old woman's face clearly. By the way, why didn't I hear you mention your mother? Where is she? Where is my mother? It's been more than two years since she passed. I listened to what Amelia said and thought for a moment, then realized that she had not mentioned her mother, so I took the initiative to ask, then I received the answer that her mother had passed away more than two years ago. What a coincidence. Can you take me to your mother's room? Suddenly, a few thoughts popped into my head. I took the initiative to ask Amelia to show me the room her mother used to live in for a bit. Okay. Follow me. I'll take you to her room. I saw that Amelia seemed a little surprised to hear my suggestion. But in the end, she agreed to take me there. Only to my surprise, Amelia's mother doesn't live in the main house but lives in a separate cottage next door. The house now looks quite old and worn out. It seems like it's been a long time since anyone has come here, nor has anyone cleaned this house. It's a bit strange indeed. Before she died, my mother lived here. Amelia said that her mother, unfortunately had a car accident and was paralyzed, making her life very inconvenient. Because the family has many men, it will be difficult to take care of her mother, so they built a small house next door for her mother to stay. Since her mother's death, they have not come to see this house very often. Her siblings said that they are afraid to look at the scenery and will miss her. Only occasionally, during the New Year's holidays, there is Amelia comes to clean up briefly. I often go to school away from home, so I cannot clean and take care of the house. Everything in the house is mainly taken care of by my brothers and sisters. I don't really agree with their way of doing things, but I can only helplessly begging them. Maybe Amelia felt very sorry for her mother for not being able to tidy up the place where she used to live. While I was talking to Amelia, I felt like someone was standing behind me. I slightly turned my shoulder blades and glanced behind me. That's when I saw the ghost of the old woman who threw the brick earlier. This old woman's ghost seemed to know that I could see her. I noticed that she was constantly hovering around and staring at me. That look gave me a bit of a jolt. I couldn't have guessed what the old woman's ghost meant, for I stood motionless and did nothing. I caught a glimpse of the old woman's ghost moving from back and forth before me and then flying backward. Suddenly, I felt a strange force gradually entering my body. Could that be the old woman's soul? I was surprised and panicked. How could it be? As soon as that old woman's soul completely entered my body, it seemed as though a specific scene appeared before my eyes. 
The scene in front of my eyes was a bit blurry at first. Then it gradually became more apparent. I could see four people standing in front of me. One of these people is Amelia's father. The three children, I guess, are Amelia's two brothers and sister. They were focused on discussing something. I could only see pictures but couldn't see sound, so I couldn't hear what they were saying. After discussing for a while, it seems that they have reached an agreement on something. I saw him move to where an old woman was lying silently. The old woman lying on the bed looked exactly like the ghost of the old woman I had seen. I guess it was Amelia's mother. I think I figured out a bit of the problem. Amelia's mother lay quietly on the bed, and she was barely conscious. I saw the four of them looking at her with rather complicated eyes. Despite them staring at her intently, but the women also just lying there, she didn't react at all. If I hadn't seen her still breathing, I would have thought she'd be dead. Suddenly, a scene occurred that took me by surprise. I saw one of Amelia's two brothers take out a pillow and place the pillow on the old woman's face. I have guessed his intentions. Then he pressed down on the pillow. The old woman lying on the bed didn't protest or do anything. I saw both the person pressing the other pillow and the other three crying especially the man who was pressing the pillow. His face was full of sorrow and regret. As soon as I finished watching that scene, suddenly there was a loud thunderclap in my ears. Now I'm back to normal. There's no scene just now, no old woman ghosts. Now, outside, it's pouring rain. What happened to you? Why were you standing motionless just now? I kept calling, but you didn't answer. You scared me to death. It turned out that while I saw the scene, I stood motionless for a long time. Does your mother have short silver hair and a mole below her left eye? Yes, that's right. How did you know that? Although I had already assumed that the old woman was Amelia's mother, I still described it and wanted her to confirm a bit. Okay, now listen carefully to what I have to say. Maybe I won't be able to help you. I chose not to tell her what I saw earlier. Amelia's family made a terrible and cruel choice. Killing a person with a beating heart and still breathing. Now I understand why Mr. Simmons again refused to help her. I can't help you with this. I have to go. But your mother's illness has burdened your family a lot? I made the same choice as Mr. Simmons. That's not helping this family. I got up and left that place. But before I left, I asked her a little question. Yes, indeed, it takes a lot of money to treat my mother and take care of her medicine every day. This will make my family going through a very harsh life. She painfully told me about their family situation at that time. But can't you help us? I saw Amelia seemed very sad when she learned that I refused to help. Tears rolled down her cheeks. Do you think that people who do wrong should be punished? I didn't have the courage to tell her the whole truth. She was utterly clueless about this. Perhaps her mother was resentful of her husband and children because they did such cruel things to her, so she wanted them to experience some suffering. I left a blank sentence, then put on my sunglasses and left. Walk under the night rain. You went to the girl's house, didn't you? I stayed outside until the evening. The things I saw made me very uncomfortable. On the way back, I met Mr. Simmons. He knows I went to that girl's house. Turns out he knew about their family and refused to help. I used to think that Mr. Simmons will handle all things related to his forte for anyone in need, but it turns out he has his own principles too. Okay, let's go back. It's raining so hard, you going to get a cold. Did you ask that girl that her family? It seemed he had known everything. 